We had honesty. It's you the difference between being honest and you being be honest. We had offensiveness. It was insulting. It was offensive. And we wondered, is it okay? It's okay. It's okay. It shouldn't just be okay. This is your The Bachelor Greatest Seasons Ever, Season 1, Episode 10, Big Finale Recap. So grab your glasses. It's time for Roses and Rosé. Hi, everybody. It's me, Lauren Zima. Oh, it is so good to see everybody as we start to talk about The Bad Bachelor. I speak the language of love. Yes, this is one Pablo Galavis' season of The Bachelor being recapped in The Bachelor. Greatest seasons ever, whatever you want to call it. Goat show. The greatest seasons ever. And of course, we're going to get Claire, our bachelorette. Now, a quick update. I did tell everyone that my air conditioning wasn't working last week. But as you can see, I'm now working a long sleeve turtleneck. What am I thinking? Well, the truth is that some uh, very kind gentlemen came and checked everything out and said, ma'am, your air conditioning is working. It's just very hot. And the building you live in is poorly made. Great. <laughs> so, you know, that was a lot to process. And on top of that, I now have to process the man dubbed the worst bachelor ever. So to comprehend it all, I've poured myself a tequila. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're going, oh, hi. I heavy poured myself a tequila. <laughs> yes, to comprehend it all, we have gone to the next level. We love our wine, but it's tequila time, everybody. Um, and today I've got kind of just a little rocks glass here and I have a glacier ice cube. I love a glacier ice cube. They're big, they're snazzy, they're fabulous. Mm -hmm. Wow, let's get to it. <laughs> oh, I don't like recipes, I don't measure. So everything's always a surprise, you know? It's like I'm really bad with directions. Never know where I'm going, never know where you might end up. Keeps it fun. <laughs> so what happened that made Juan Pablo's season and his reputation go entirely off the rails? So right off the bat, don't drink every time Chris Harrison says Juan Pablo was the most hated bachelor ever. One of the most hated men in America. How did it all rapidly go downhill from heartthrob to heel in spectacular fashion? Collision course to infamy. Yes, interestingly, he was very beloved as he was heading into being The Bachelor. He even said America wanted him to be The Bachelor. I am in this situation because America wanted me to be The Bachelor. And by the way, I love the way he says Bachelor. El Bachelor Latino. So I will give him that. Mm -hmm. I speak the language of love. I see the appeal. You know, he was a single dad, a former professional athlete, good looking, had the scruff, and a sexy accent. El Bachelor. Like, I get it, but Juan Pablo didn't, did he? And we're gonna get to that, okay. I'm beyond excited to meet him, and it can't come soon enough. But of course, the reason this is the greatest season's ever finale is because it's leading us into Claire's season. Check. So right off the bat, we're gonna get Claire. Uh -huh. Pregnant Claire, yes, Claire <laughs> showed up to night one. And I only watched a little bit of this season, so I didn't remember this. Claire showed up to night one um, with a fake pregnant belly. <laughs> what do you know about this? Let me see. <laughs> and this was like 2014. So this does give us an idea of how long Claire has been waiting <laughs> to find the right guy and start a family. By the way, uh, touching briefly on Claire's a poster, her bachelorette poster, came out and the line on it is, it's about time. You know what I would have said? Worth the wait. Because we've been waiting for it, Claire. We've been waiting for your season during the quarantine and you've been waiting for love. And it's gonna be worth the wait, I think. It's gonna be good. Mm -hmm. So what's great about this is it's a bit of a Claire catch up. If you didn't know Claire very well, if you didn't watch her on this season or on Paradise or on Winter Games, you know, Claire's kind of a Nick Vial, isn't she? <laughs> Let's drink for every franchise show Claire's been on. Mm -hmm. If you didn't, you can get to know her a little bit here. She's the youngest of six women in her family, and she did lose her dad to cancer. So she talks about the importance of her dad. My dad was 
a wonderful man. He even made a DVD that she has never watched for her future husband to watch one day before he died. I have not seen it, nobody's seen it, but I'm saving it for the right man to watch it. The question is, is Claire engaged right now? Has someone watched that DVD? I wanna know, I can't wait for the season. I just can't, can't wait, I just can't wait. I just wanna, wanna watch it right now. I just wanna see it all happen. I don't wanna post it, I want the actual episodes. Mm. Wow. Um, this is essentially a shot, I think. Maybe two. I don't know. What's in here? Kind of just tequila and lime juice. <laughs> and you know, again, reviewing Juan Pablo's season is about renewing our love for Claire. Drink every time Chris Harrison says, we're gonna get to talk to Claire on this episode. Claire is here from quarantine to Claire will share some top secret details. We'll hear the surprising lessons she learned from being with him. And later, our next Bachelorette, Claire joins us and fills us in. And what did Claire have to do with it? So I'm just gonna say, a bunch of stuff happened, and now we're at the fantasy suites. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Drink for everything I fast forwarded. Should you choose to forgo your individual rooms, please use this key to stay as a couple in the fantasy suite. Now in the fantasy suites, we do of course have more than Claire. We have some other great ladies. Andy Dorfman's here, everybody. Yes, Andy Dorfman is here and there is a lot to unpack here. Because Andy goes into the fantasy suites with Juan Pablo. Yes, Andy Dorfman has checked in and she's got a big old suitcase to unpack. Talking about emotional baggage. Like the unpacking of a trauma. So Andy comes out of the fantasy suites with Juan Pablo. I could not wait to get out. She should be flying high. The fantasy suite turned into a nightmare. She should be soaring. The whole night was just a disaster. But instead, she's enraged. <laughs> Yes. I was extremely upset. I felt like, and I still feel like, Juan Pablo doesn't take this seriously. <laughs> Don't drink every time Andy Dorfman said she knows it's over. I know it's not gonna work. It's not even that I'm, I'm unsure. Like, I know that I wouldn't end up marrying him, and I know that he's not the one. So what happened here? Of course, the fantasy suites are the only part of the show not on camera. Actually, some stuff is also not on camera and a pretty critical moment this season also happened at not on camera. We're gonna get to that when it comes to Claire, so you know, don't go anywhere. And Andy says that in this off-camera time, you know, she thought Juan Pablo would really want to get to know her. Not once did he really ask anything about me. Uh, but I don't know, he did not. Instead, he talked about himself. All he wanted to do was kind of say it's okay and give me a kiss. Yes, she says that Juan Pablo didn't ask her anything about herself during the fantasy suites. Now, she also says that ultimately, she feels like he doesn't really know her at all. So crazy to think how little he actually knows about me at this point. So I will say this, that's a big red flag. It's not like he got dropped in the fantasy suites. If he doesn't really know her at this point, that means he also wasn't asking her questions about herself during all the time they spent together. So I will say, Andy, should have dumped him sooner. And I'm not blaming her. I'm not saying she's at fault here. I'm just saying let's all learn from this situation, you know? If somebody's not asking you questions about you on date one, bye. Any relationship needs to be a two-way street. Who likes a one-way? Nobody. They're annoying and they can go in circles. Do you know what I'm saying? Obey the rules of traffic. And also use your turn signals. I've talked about that before. I don't like when people don't do it. Communicate. But we love Andy. She's a strong, intelligent woman, and she is going to confront the bachelor. El bachelor latino. I have to do what's in my heart and do what I think is right and be true to myself, which means telling Juan Pablo that I'm leaving. And we're really seeing what Andy was talking about, aren't we? Uh, I mean, she's talking and he's staring at her but he's not seeing her. I came here mm -hmm. because I wanted to find love. Yeah. He's hearing, but he's not listening. Despite all the great feelings and the great adventures, it, it wasn't gonna work. Mm -hmm. He's verbally affirming, mm -hmm. but he's not really saying anything. It's okay. And he's certainly not making sense. No, no, no. Okay. As Andy's explaining what went wrong, he says things like, 
all of us have thoughts going through our minds. I had a lot of thoughts running through my mind. and All of us have thoughts. What? She tells him she realized she doesn't love him, and he says, that's perfect. I realized that I wasn't in love with you. It's perfect. And that... I'm like, is it? <laughs> And Andy's starting to get annoyed, and I don't blame her because he's not making sense. He's not acknowledging her feelings. And he does say he respects her. I respect but, you 100%. But did he act like it? I'm not sure. It's okay. Mm. I, I will say this for Juan Pablo. The words he was saying were not wrong. He, he said he understood her and that he respected her. I just don't know if he really did. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. At the end of the day, I think the reason Andy really is so upset is because she feels like Juan Pablo and doesn't know her. I just never honestly feel like you mm -hmm. were trying to get to know me. And she tests him. Don't drink for everything he didn't know. Have any idea mm -hmm. like what religion I practice, what my political hey. views are, what my, hang on, what mm -hmm. my, you know, views mm -hmm. on social issues, things that matter. Do you have any idea how I want to raise my kids? Do you have any idea about any of that? I have no idea about any of that. And then he tests her back, and she aces it. What's my religion? Catholic. Things are escalating, so don't drink every time they say honest. I'm, I'm upset, being honest. Hey, I'm being honest. I'm being honest. Okay. Do I appreciate honesty? Absolutely. It's offensive to you that I'm honest, and I say Is you. The difference be, between being listen, honest and you, being. Be honest. Like, Andy really gets riled up when she tells Juan Pablo, well, you didn't ask me anything about myself, and he says, it's fine. I I've never been with someone who's asked me so little about myself. Uh, it's fine. Is it? It's not fine. It's not. And that's when we get into, it's okay. But if you don't feel it, Andy, it's okay. Yes, Juan Pablo loves to say, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Forget up that I said it's okay. Okay. Juan Pablo argued he was just being honest though. So what do you think? Was he being honest or offensive? And was it okay? Forget up that I said it's okay. But of course Andy would go on to become the bachelorette, so she's okay. But now we're gonna get to our girl who does hair. Yes, everybody, now we are getting into Claire Crawley and Juan Pablo Galavis's relationship on The Bachelor. So Claire was in the final two. And Juan Pablo didn't come through. No, 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 this relationship crashed and burned like this straight tequila does going down my throat. Mm -hmm. There's a little lime in there. Tart, it's tart. That'll wake you right up from this quarantine dream. So we're on to Claire, but we're still talking about honesty. Since the day he blindfolded me in the car, Juan Pablo has told me to trust him. Juan Pablo says something really offensive. It was insulting. It was offensive. Thematic. It's a thematic season. But it didn't happen on camera. In one of the most iconic moments in Bachelor franchise history, Juan Pablo and Claire were in a helicopter where there were no cameras. No audio. Nobody there with us. So Claire is upset, and she just has to explain that Juan Pablo said something inappropriate. Juan Pablo leaned over and whispered something to me. What I thought was gonna be sweet, kind, loving words was not what came out of his mouth. Apparently he said he doesn't really know her, but he does like hooking up with her. That he really doesn't know me, and some sexual thing. I don't even want to repeat. Yeah, also, I'm gonna guess that he didn't say hooking up with her. You know what I mean? He self-admitted that he had kind of a language barrier. English is my second language. Didn't always know American phrases. If we're being honest, my guess would be that he probably phrased it in a more uh, blunt and, and, and probably vulgar way. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. So just like Andy had to do, this is confront Juan Pablo round two. He comes over to see Claire and he says, well, can I have a little besito? Can I have a besito? Is that okay? And I'm like, I don't know. Can you? Can I have a besito? No? Come on in. Come on in. I don't know. I don't speak Spanish. Can you? What does that mean? <laughs> I had to look it up. And it means a little kiss and the answer is no, you cannot. No, you cannot. Mm. 
But even though she denies the pasito, Claire does talk to Juan Pablo, don't you know? And they kind of work things out. Um, he explains to her that it was a bit of a communication issue. You got me wrong. It's not that I don't know you at all. Mm -hmm. I don't even know you enough. That you don't know me enough. That he didn't mean he doesn't know her. He just meant he needs to know her better in order to get engaged. And he tells her that she's really special to him. Because I want you to be here. So you're special to me. No. 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 I could believe the don't know you, like meaning I need to get to know you better communication issue. Oh God, I got my own hair on here. I might have gotten the AC fixed, but I haven't gotten a haircut, okay? My hair gets everywhere, it's a problem. But let's break down something here, because just like Andy kind of missed some red flags with Juan Pablo, I think Claire missed one as well. When are we the most ourselves? When no one's watching. If we're all being honest, when do you do Eh, kind of the grossest stuff you do, or the most embarrassing stuff you do. The things you don't want anyone else to see, when no one is watching. Mm -hmm. So when the cameras were down, and Juan Pablo had the chance to really be himself, what he chose to tell Claire was that he liked hooking up with her. That's a big indicator of who he is, Claire what he said in that moment. He could have used that moment to say, hey, uh, no one's watching us, so I'm gonna tell you, I wanna pick you. But no, 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 he did not, not, not. So I wish he'd been dumped then and there by our girl Claire, but things didn't fare that way, so time for a proposal-ish. So Claire's looking beautiful. I am loving that color on her. And she is going to Juan Pablo, and she tells him she's nervous. And he says, of course, it's okay. It's okay. Is it? It's not. It's fine, don't be nervous. I'm nervous too. Yeah. You know, why would he tell her it's okay when he knows he's about to dump her? And he's doing the exact same thing he did with Andy, saying it's okay. It's okay. But not listening not making sense. I believed in you. Mm -hmm. He dumps Claire and she says, I thought you were the man of my dreams. And he says, me too. I've saved this moment for the man of my dream. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was you. Me too. Why would he say that if he's the one dumping her? It just doesn't make any sense. You are not being wronged here, Juan Pablo Galavis. El bachelor. And that's what makes me think that with these women, instead of listening, he is hearing. He keeps waiting for her to stop talking. For you to sit there and tell me that you can see yourself in Sacramento, that you can see yourself if we got together. I can see We you. have our babies. Mm -hmm. You know, he keeps almost jumping in. I mean, at one point, he just makes a noise. And I thought I knew what kind of man you were. Mm. <laughs> 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 mm. uh, okay. Don't drink every time he says it's okay. Okay, hey. Okay. Does it matter to me? Okay. I lost respect for you. Okay. I would never want my children having a father like you. Okay. It is not okay. <laughs> You are dumping a woman who you had just talked about having kids with. It is not okay. Oh. Like maybe before with Andy, it was kind of okay. If you don't think it's me, it's, it's okay. But now it's really not okay. Anyway, you can see why Juan Pablo was known as the most hated bachelor. Whew, I'm glad they didn't pick her. But it's proposal day and we still have one woman left. He's gonna propose to Nikki, right? He's gonna redeem himself, right? He's not. No, he's not. Uh, and again, he's, he's not making sense, you know? A at the point in time when you would normally be professing your love to someone, he starts saying things like, it's been a time. It's been a perfect time. And you have qualities. You have the qualities. And you want to be with a person. Because you want to be with a person. What? 
Ultimately, he tells Nikki he likes her a lot. I like you a lot. A lot. It's not okay. It was not okay. He asks her if she will accept his final rose. Will you accept my final rose? And she does, but don't drink for this uncomfortable face Nikki makes as she decides. <laughs> Wish I could have given her a shot of tequila. This one's for you, Nikki. The problem with Juan Pablo is that he never redeemed himself. I mean, if we look at some of the other disliked bachelors, Jason Mesnick made a mistake, but wound up with Molly and they're happy. Ari made a mistake, but he's now with Lauren Burnham and they're happy. Juan Pablo and Nikki stayed together for a little while. Um, at the After the Final Rose, Chris Harrison asked him, well, are you now in love with Nikki? So you love her. And not only was he not, but his response didn't make sense. So you love her. I'm not gonna answer that question to you. Juan Pablo said to Chris Harrison, I'm not gonna answer that because you don't say that to people in relationships. I'm not gonna answer that question to you. I don't, I don't get it. This is real life, you know, and when, when you are with somebody, you don't say you love her or not, if you are there or not. What? So they broke up and Nikki is now happily married. I'm married. And more importantly, Claire is here! Claire is here! Claire is here! <laughs> oh, God. No! 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 <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta doctor this up just to snuggle. Yes, from quarantine on the set of The Bachelorette, Claire is joining Chris Harrison for a Zoom. Uh, he says that she was already there. Of course, he would have to go to the set. You are in quarantine because we are about to start shooting your season of The Bachelorette. But Claire was there. Claire is here. And what's interesting is that now that we know that at one point, Tasha becomes The Bachelorette, I am hanging on every word for clues. <laughs> Don't drink for everything that felt kind of ominous and possibly indicative of something happening, even though these two were talking before filming had begun. Chris Harrison says if he does his job correctly, she'll find love. And hopefully about to meet the love of her life if I do my job correctly. Did he? And I love hearing from Claire. Uh, she says she's gone through a lot and she loves herself. And as somebody who has gone through a lot and learned to just love herself. And she could not be more ready. I could not be more ready for this. Claire is ready. She says the most important thing to her is getting to know the person. Real one-on-one -on -one connection and just having the time to get to know each other. So did she? Oh my God, I'm exhausted. Getting 10,000 steps doing this show. I mean, Chris says she'll probably be engaged. You're going to probably be engaged. Is that wild to think? So is she? Let me give you a tour, let me give you a tour here. Oh, and then we're moving, we're vlogging, we are on a tour. Claire is showing us where she is staying for the show. She's showing us everything. It's kind of chaotic. She's got her dogs and she's got some crystals. Here are my crystals. Good energy. And her bed. This is where the magic happens. Oh, fantasy sweets. And it's all happening and the episode is over. And I'm so glad that we wrapped things up with Claire because we are going to start things again for her season. October 13th on ABC, the new season of The Bachelorette premieres. And of course, we will be recapping and reviewing it for Roses and Rosé. Remember, it airs on Tuesdays this fall because the pandemic threw off the schedule. They have to not conflict with Monday Night Football sports and the bachelorette is going to be on tuesday so we will see you guys every wednesday for roses and rose covering the night before's episode thank you guys so much for watching roses and rose the bachelor greatest seasons ever of all time we love you so much and so much has happened during quarantine christian got pregnant she's having a little baby girl maybe one day a future bachelorette we don't know <laughs> And JC, looking back at these seasons has made me remember, of course, it's been you and me on this show from the beginning. How ready are you for the new season of The Bachelorette? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> cheers, my friends. And cheers to all of you. Okay, you guys know we've been filming at my apartment, and so this is my apartment. And um, you know, I've got—I don't have crystals, but I have like a, a, this. I got this at Marshall, so this has great energy. And um, thank you, guys. I am on Cameo, and I am on Twitter, and I am on TikTok and Instagram. And um, I love you so much. Thank you for watching. Okay, bye.